Hey guys, this is Dardamos with Dardamos Dominions, and I'm in with a party of co-hosts today. So, Balin, say hi. Hello. Kirby's with us once again. Say hi, Kirby. Hello, hello. And for the second time, we have Second A. Hello, everybody. So we are going into um, first thing is this is this is kind of a bit of a uh, this is kind of a topic already. He pinged a throne with a mage. What do you guys ping thrones with? Twice born mages. <laughs> <laughs> Diseased things. <laughs> Would you go in with a mage? Why or why not? Uh, let's go with uh, Kirby. Hit this one. Maybe to gem bait, but with thrones, it's complicated. So, uh, no, I would I would do no. it with a scout. Why not? You can't gem bait thrones. Well, Cur Kirby, let's because let, we hit two topics there, and I want to go to the next one to Sakane. Why would you do a scout instead instead of a, a mage? Well, mages can just do more things. They can research, they can be in battles, they can forge items, cast rituals, all sorts of stuff. I mean, well, that's what, a nature one mage? So, I mean, he can't do that much, but he can still research. Is that the one right next to his cap, by the way? The throne right next to his cap? It is. Paying? Yeah, so, I mean, it's not the worst in the world. But but there's always the chance of you of him retreating after a ping and then just dying, and then you lost a mage and the mage turn and the money to build the mage and scouts are just cheaper in general and especially because pangea can recruit harpy scouts from any forest um, i was just looking at that <laughs> yeah there we go now to so, yeah. his credit he does he he's guaranteed to the retreat ash he's guaranteed to retreat because every single area that he could retreat to is his territory so maybe that's why he did it. But I like what you hit on with, you know, with research turns and there's better things you can do with mages. Now, second, a, uh, you said that you cannot gem bait a throne. What, how, how does that work? Uh, I, the, so if the, if you click there, yeah, see that guy has, I don't know, 10 fire, 12 water and some astral. Um, he'll just always have that. Like if you, Let's say you bring an army and you fail to win the battle, but he casts, he uses a bunch of those gems, casting elementals and stuff like that. If you go back the next turn, they'll still have all those gems. Um, now, indeed. Balin. Like they cheat. Uh, Balin, uh, how hard is this thrown? Oops, what the heck? Well, how, how hard would you or say this Pan with is? his high fire res. Uh, I don't remember if he's got magic weapons or not. But he I'm does. pretty sure like 25, maybe 30 white centaurs could clear this. So this is an easy throne. Oh, With his fire right. resistance plus. Let me actually pause it so I can. So you think that um, even with this guy, what is this guy? Uh, uh, Kirby, what do you think that this guy can cast? Uh, living fire, large fire elementals, water elementals. And then if you're really lucky, like Balin is, Soul Slay. <laughs> oh no! Uh, if you're really lucky, like me, he'll control and uh, steal yeah, your say, unit. From yeah, that's true. Enslave, enslave mind. That's that's what you're really lucky with. <laughs> enslave mind your mass, your 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 uh, <laughs> mages. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I think, moving. Was that sorry? Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say the. I think I didn't. I don't know that what the bless is, but if you have strong fr, that's actually doable. Um, but you'll still. It'd be nice if you had magic weapons to kill the fire elementals. Um, he has both, by the way. He has fire, resist 10, and he has magic weapons. Oh, then no problem. Easy so, peasy. Um, and one thing I want to note about this, and uh, uh, Sakane, if you're Pan and you get this throne on a rating of, you know, 1 to 10, how happy are you? I mean, you're pretty happy. Attack... You're happy for a few reasons. Obviously, attack is great. Although, to be honest, the, the white centaurs have, with the berserk, they have really high attack anyways. Um, but, hey, more attack is always good. But you're happy because you get uh, access to fire with great fire mages and also fire gem income. Uh, so this is amazing because it is fantastic for magic diversity and it's fantastic for your sacreds, which you're relying on as Panchia. So it's just... a uh, a uh, win-win. 
So, let's see. Let's move on to the next battle then. So, like, Pan has, Pan has just found out he's got an easy throne that gives him, or that he doesn't know this yet, but he that, that will give him magic diversity. So, good turn from Pan, even with just, you know, even if he did waste a mage yeah. turn. Yeah, don't ping with a mage. <laughs> Okay, uh, Lizard Warriors versus Ulmish Troops. Uh, I'm going to go back to you with Zack again because you just did an Ulmish uh, a playthrough. How dangerous are Lizard Warriors for your for your troops? Well, we were just talking about this, actually, uh, maybe, I don't know, in the chronology of your videos, but we were talking about Amazing Tisk. Yeah, so these are, like, slightly worse than the Elite Warriors that Amazing Tisk gets, but this just goes to show how scary these troops are, right? That... First of all, two attacks per square, but a trident that does 20 piercing damage, that can hurt Ulm troops, right? Ulm is one of those nations where you're like, oh, I'll just do whatever I want and nothing's ever going to kill my guys. Well, if Satis comes at you with, you know, the same number of Ulm guys, except they've all got tridents, like all the resources are useless. Like these are just going to die to tridents just like any other troops. So, no, I mean, obviously Ulm wins, right? Like, the flails are better. Like, let's not kid ourselves. The flails, the Ulm guys are better units. But normally, Ulm expands without taking any attrition. And then you try to take 15 elite warriors, and you he lost, what, like, 10 guys or something? He lost seven, seven guys, guys, even though he yeah. outnumbered them. That's huge attrition, and that's what you get for running into lizard warriors. Although, nature, he might have gotten a lucky, like, entangle shot with the shaman. That can happen, too, so... Nature mages um, are scary. Balin, just a question, because uh, you see that the 20 damage, he does 20 damage, but these guys have got 23 protection. How is he able to kill seven of them? Remember, piercing damage reduces uh, prop by 10%. So so it's instead of being 23 protection, it's 20, uh, like 21 19. to 20. Is it 19? Okay. Because it's about he loses about four or five, so it's about nineteen. So it's twenty versus nineteen. That's going to be more than chip damage. I do right? wish that's... that they would have the the like down here where it says pierce damage. If they could add to the tool tip to that, because that'd be really nice to know what pierce damage does. Now in return he does blunt damage, and what does blunt damage do? Uh, I think it's just extra damage to the head. Um... Yeah, blunt damage is one of the least useful ones. If you get a head. If you get a head hit, which is only a 10% chance... Then and this guy has no armor mm -hmm. anyways, so he's going to die no matter what, correct? Pretty much. Blood damage is one of the less useful ones. It does extra head damage if you score a head hit, but that's pretty rare. Okay. Moving on, uh, Van went and ran into a PD dump. Now, uh, uh, wow. Balin, you play Elven Nations... How scared are you of PD dumps? Because I mean, it's, it's uh, this is a pretty big loss. Do you do you stop raiding, or what do you do in this situation? How do you avoid this? That's not a big loss. That's one turn of recruitment from your cap, and that's it. So you just say, you know, darn the cannons in in charge, anyways. You make a note that this has sixty two barbarians in it, and you back with. Another troop that isn't seven elves on a horse. And this is a pretty expensive PD dump too. I think it's thirty-one PD, which is uh, that's not small. Uh, what's what's the maximum PD that you've ever done in a game, Kirby? Um, I think I've probably gotten up to that before. Um, in a in a single player or a test game, I go up to a hundred. But um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it really depends on the PD that you've got because barbarians is good. Barbarians is good PD. Um, if you got like knights or cataphracts, that would be good too. Uh, second, a from good players, what's the highest PD that uh, dump that you've ever seen? Uh, you can, uh, if you have a good PD type uh, and the gold to spare, uh, the sky's the limit. Um, like if you know, PD dumps, you got to know that they're going to attack you in that province, right? Um, and sometimes you just do, and you pull it off, and it feels amazing. Um, I, it's, uh, don't be afraid to PD dump if you have a good PD type. I think you hit um, on something, 
key here is is it it's it's got to be good um in order to do this are barbarians good there are some of the best for sure um barbarians would be at the top uh cavalry obviously would be pretty good um i mean sometimes you wars. yeah they don't show up often as pd but but definitely um and obviously some of the worst like in caves you get a far fewer number of guys showing up um so that's usually a bad investment you know there are certainly going to be situations where even if it's a bad pd type you just need like the bodies like you have a special play that you're going to do with like mages and you just need some chaff in front of them like you're going to maybe have good magic so you're going to do like i don't know fog warriors and mass protection and stuff so then even the crappy militia becomes good but uh yeah barbarian pd dump is is a real kick in the shins if you're not expecting it now balin let's say that uh you're you're the person who van is attacking you're ashed out in this situation or another nation uh how often do you pd dump like what what, what, actually to to kind of go into that a little bit further when do you pd dump how much do you pd dump and if you're not going to pd dump and you're going to do normal defense how much pd do you put in one six or ten Am I using this Ashdod build? Uh, just general rating idea. Because I, I don't if think I'm the build matters for Ashdod PD, right? Build, I don't build a single Anakite. And I build a whole bunch of Gildalites, not Gildalites, uh, Edomites with their javelins and spears. And I well, focus I'm just, on I'm taking, talking PD. And I focus on taking back as much of my land as I can while trying to push them back and kill a couple vans here and there. Uh, PD, maybe six, maybe one, probably just one in a bunch of places, unless it's like barbarians, and then like maybe 25. Um, Sack, why why would you put in one PD instead of six? In, or I mean, I, the other way around, why would you put six PD in instead of one? So six is a standard that uh, you do in Dominions, and the reason is because it blocks at least one event uh, that... Uh, there are a bunch of events in Dominions where random Indies can come and attack your province, and obviously those are bad. Uh, so having 6PD stops one of those events, which is the villains or brigands, I forget what they're called. Um, so that's why most people put 6PD, and it's also pretty cheap. It's like 30 gold or whatever. Um, however, if it's like if you're in a war and you're taking territory for somebody else, or if you're being raided by elves, then... 1 PD or 15 PD isn't going to stop vans unless they're maybe barbarians, but even then probably not. So you might don't waste your gold putting PD. That's just going to die. So then you just put one PD. So the, the, it, the decision there is, is this a province that is like in my core? And in that case, put six PD. But if you're worried that it might die to, um, you know, it might get raided, then you just put one PD. Always put one PD so you know what they're attacking with. That's but another key thing, uh, yeah. Kirby. Wh why would you? Only, why would you even put one PD if you think that the guy's going to take it back? Yeah, you want to at least know exactly what they're attacking with and where. Uh, that's part of the counter rating strategy because then you can maybe, uh, depending on the state of the game, cloud your P's them back, or um, be able to track their movements, see what direction they're going with their troops and stuff like that. Okay, so let's say that you're talking to my wife who's never played Dominions before. Why does one PD give you information whereas none gives you no information? Um, well, you get to watch the battle replay of your one PD getting killed, and you get to see part of the script of the attacking army. You get to see um, exactly what is in the unit composition, uh, just general stuff like that, as opposed to if... <laughs> If you don't put any PD in there, then you're going to get the message of your undefended province was lost, and then you maybe see a scouting report. One PD is especially useful for um, defending, well, fighting a raiding war, a counter raiding war against uh, elf nations because they won't even be visible on the strategic map. Now, I uh, in in that line of regards for one PD and moving a little bit away from. Um, moving a little bit away from rating and just in general, uh, as, as an army, if you have one PD, um, 
and you get to see his army. What are you looking for in an army that attacks? Um, I would look at script of the mages or um, the self-buff cycle of a thug that is being sent against you. I would look to see how many gems are on the field, um, because then you can sort of get a sense of what spells might be cast. You can see what gear are on all the commanders. Um, and just the exact number, like it, while we're watching these battles, for example, you get to see exactly how many people are participating in each battle, uh, just from the battle report itself. Okay, so let's move on to uh, this fight, which is in the uh, in the caves, and uh, yeah, I, th I think that's nothing big, right? Now, do well, he is getting to that. Uh, um, critical mass that I was talking about where he, he doesn't really have to worry about how many white centaurs he's going to lose. Do necromancer indies mean that you get necromancers in that province? No. No, but usually it's you have a death site. Um, oh, really? There's usually, there's often a necromancer's layer. I could be I'm kind of curious. We, we could see later, um, and hopefully we'll remember, probably not, but uh, hopefully we'll remember to check and see if he'd search death and uh, if there's anything here. Okay, um, next one is uh, boring fight for the most part. Is his is his bless online? Have we seen his full bless yet? I think his god's awake. Oh, his 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 uh his bless is not even online yet. He oh wait no there. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so this might be the first time that the viewers are seeing this bless. He did, he did, he did go dormant on this one. Okay, so we get to see that he added blood vengeance and fortitude. Is that correct? And undead regen. And undead regen. That's an important. And one. berserker. Is berserker a is is berserker an awake one or is it? Yeah, right? I think it's awake. Yeah, oh, it's my. awake. So at this point, he is now online with some scary-looking units. Those still die to fire elementals, and they die on mass to fire elementals. That one. Now, this guy right here, does it tell you if he gets brought back to life? Because he's got the, uh, he's got like some crazy amount of... Oh no, he doesn't. He doesn't have where they come back to life. Oh no, he is on dying four. Does you... does that show in the combat at all? Sorry, it'll show <laughs> negative hit points, but other than that, um, that's not exactly coming back to life. Yeah, yeah so he's he has... dead. He's dead. Yeah, he has. So you saw his bless includes undying four, which means he can go to minus four hit points. That's his new zero, but he went to minus five, so he just dies. So this guy, um, oh, there you go. It's minus one, and he's still alive. He's still alive, but he'll die at the end of combat unless he gets healed. He happens to have regen, so he'll probably make it. No, but... the uh, un undead do not. That's why. That's the benefit of undying. If you click on undying, I think it'll show that. He's back to zero now. Wait, oh, but he's dead. What? Well, he might have gotten hit again. I don't know. If you nice. lose your head, you still die. Oh, so if your head it. gets destroyed? Well, I mean, that shouldn't matter to an undead unit, though. <laughs> he also took 10 points of damage when he only has uh, 10 oh, he HP. Took, yeah. He took 20 points of damage, but it went down to 10 somehow. I'm so, so confused. This is... Alright. I If this is the same guy as before... No, because we don't see... Yeah, see, look. He got hit for... Alright, look. He got, they have like five or six hit points, right? Oh, you're yeah. correct. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So he just got killed by the uh, charge. He just died. Okay, that makes from sense. From taking too much damage. But the other guy that previously wasn't that we were looking at, um, he took seven points of damage, which brought him back, and then it brought him back up to positive because of his uh, the 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 undead regen. Yeah, he happens to have a bless that heals him. Yeah. So it literally brought like because of that he he's he's. Get, he doesn't lose this knight at the end of the turn, and instead he gets to keep him. No, no. HP was brought up because he has regeneration in his less. Oh, so the undead regen doesn't count? The undead regen is healing him in the battle. So at the end of battle, will he have this guy again is my question. 
Yes, yes. he only loses yeah. one at the end of this bet. Uh, uh, wait, I, I don't remember. Well, we he can wait until two. they... Once, okay, once they run two. away, we can see, because at that point it's probably going to stay this way. So these two guys are permanently dead, and the guy that was at negative like one or something like that is back up to four hit points. Let's see how many he lost. Two. Two, yeah. So that's a that's a good way to stop attrition. Except for the fact that he's now lost 20 nights total. Uh, if we recall going over the um, video where we interviewed um, Novell, he was talking about how you pick your bless for either your knights or your uh, lictors. And so the bless he picked is more of a lictor bless, not a knight bless. So that's why he's pretty much only using these for like expansion, because he probably doesn't care as much about how many of these he loses. Yeah, fair point. Uh, I would like to also bring up, he took Misfortune 3 as a pop kill agent, so we won't be seeing a team move. Yeah, that's, that's freaking crime. Sad. It's a crime. Very sad to me. <laughs> yeah, but you have to pay for that outrageous bliss somehow. Okay, yeah, to... just don't take Berserker. I I'm not I'm not in support of Berserker. I think that's a pretty unusual choice, but Okay, so moving on to the Van Heim, uh he ran into a couple uh a, a mage and a where is this? That's one? no, that's back on Ashdod. So this guy was um the, the, the mage was up here and during a war against what what is this mage doing here? I guess is my question. And Balin, I would like to ask you that one. What what what's going on with He's this mage? Sight being searching. Here? Remember, Ashdod attacked into Van and then got stomped. So this guy was clearly out sight searching for Earth gems. But he, you That's know, this has gone on for five or six turns now, and he's got a map move eighteen. I could see him theoretically moving from here into here in about two turns. Uh. Do you think he was hiding here, or do you think he was sight searching? Remember, Van took his cap and his entire cap circle in back to back turns. So mm. there is no way that moving three provinces, one of which is a highlands, the two of which are highlands, there's no way with map move 18, even with the amount of roads that are on this map, that he would make it back to his cap. He could have gotten from here down to here and then moved in next turn, but I think you're right. I think he somehow during the fight was just trying to to save this guy. Um, during an elfish, I mean, do you just stop? Do you just stop sight searching, or what do you do during that time, Zach? Yeah, you can't be sight searching if uh, vans are hiding in the bushes, <laughs> waiting to kill you. Um, yeah, you just can't be doing that. Now, let's say theoretically you're winning against Van and they've got a couple guys. I mean, how how scared should you be of that for your site searchers? It's not. So, you know, if you got to balance the cost of potentially losing your mage versus like getting two or three. Like if you did find a magic site, you would have that gem income for a few turns more than if you had waited whatever, four or five turns, and then, then the site searching, right? So, like, if you're site searching with an Earth 2, you're going to find an Earth 1 site. And let's say you waited, let's say you're winning the war, and you're just going to wait, like, a few more turns before you actually go out and site search. So you're, like, losing out on, like, four Earth gems for the cost of your mage. You know, that's the kind of calculus you have to do. Um, I think that you probably don't need to be aggressively site searching when you're fighting elves. That's maybe one of the things <laughs> that you just kind of agree that that's the cost of doing business when you're fighting a raiding nation um, is you can't just kind of site search willy nilly. The other thing you can do though is like right now I look at this map and it's like, okay, well this war is kind of over, but like if this was like a, a balance kind of one V one and let's say Van was raiding a few isolated provinces within Ashdod's larger empire, right? Then you could have mages site searching and you just have them on retreat. That's um, what I was thinking too, is that so, if, you're, if it's only one or two, then a retreat is likely to be successful, right? Yeah, exactly. In this situation, no, right? Because yeah, where's he going to retreat to? But 
but yeah, if it was like a more normal situation, then maybe you can get away with it with uh, with retreats. So that's uh, that's worth okay. considering. Um, what the heck is an Eternal Knight? That so is it's a, a very rare indie type. Yeah, that all have flame brows as their weapons. Hit like <laughs> trucks and regen. <laughs> Attack 16, damage 28, with regeneration, because, you know, why not? You can, can hire you them as mercs, too. They're mercs. Can you recruit them, though? I believe there is a site that allows you to recruit them off, but I can't remember I what it is so. off the top of my head. But but they are mercs. Like, later on in okay. the game, they show up later, and you can have them as mercs. So, possibly, I've never seen, I've never been able to recruit them. So, maybe a very rare recruitment, definitely for mercs. But these guys are scary. Now, when I look these up, what's interesting is this dude is, is not a, they don't have a commander version of this guy, I think. And so, if you, if you take this guy and you do a gift of reason, he turns into this guy, which is, I mean, it's not the best unit, but. I probably wouldn't spend the, the 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 gems on it, but it's kind of interesting that this is actually the same guy as these guys. Now, so this province that... you actually are running into is one of the rare NDPD types that will happen throughout the game. You can get the golem or a whole bunch of undead and liches. There's a couple underwater ones, but that is one of the ones that happens on land, and it is due to the holy crypt being there. Yeah, you can click on that. Oh, okay. Now you see these eternal knights. You see the heavy, uh, the heavy infantry, the knights, and the eternal knight. Uh, do how much? How, how what's your what's your for for Kirby's word? Uh, and we'll, we'll throw this one to Kirby. What's your critical mass for this? How many units do you think you should send in? Many, many, many units. Uh, I would actually take this one with probably black knights. In, and in how many black like, knights? I probably bring like between ten and twenty. Okay. What what's your what's your thought, second eight? How many? How, uh, what units in? How many? Um, I think. Oh, so, this is it, turn sixteen, by the way. If yeah, turn. I think turn sixteen. You don't touch this yet. I uh, maybe. So the thing with Cav forget the Eternal Knights just for a moment, right? Um. The scouting report can be hard to judge just with knights because honestly, six knights versus twelve knights makes a big difference. Um, so sometimes maybe you want to ping this first just to know exactly what's in it, and that's okay. forgetting the eternal knights. I'm just talking about the regular heavy cav. Um, if I had ping this and I knew the exact makeup of this, um, honestly, I'm not sure that what he brought would have been. It probably would have been enough if you don't count the Eternal Knights. The dogs are great. They're going to eat the Lance Charges. But there's like 37 heavy infantry. That plus eight knights, that does take quite a bit to chew through. And I'm not sure that 16 flail dudes is enough. Yeah. It's barely enough. I think it would probably win, but it'd be very close. Just taking on the knights and the heavy infantry, much less the Eternal Knights. Okay, but okay. you can you look at this and and you can actually see it's not that hard because there is only one commander and we see where that one commander is. That's if I had the ping result yeah. to go on Kirby, you could take this literally with five knights more than what he's got. This whole thing, you put five knights over on the southern flank, you have him go around, lance charge, this guy dies immediately. Yeah. For sure, yeah, and I would say now if you weren't lucky and let's say there was like some knight commanders or something right let's say the indies had more commanders um then i think so you don't usually expand with crossbows as uh as alm um but if you were angling for your first war and let's say you had started recruiting like sappers i don't know to take down some to siege down some walls faster then this would be a great use for uh for some crossbows too, because nothing like two-handed, like they're regenerating and they have flambeaux and stuff, and none of that matters to crossbows. So that would be another way to do it. Okay, so I we gotta we're kind of running short on time and we've gone through half a turn. So uh Wolf Tribe, 30, 30 PD worth of Wolf Tribe, worth it or not worth it? I mean this screams I got an event. <laughs> my I got gold. PD. 
round 30? I don't, I'm not sure, dude. 30 round, I just, maybe? Grippa went from 6 PD in his cap to 100 PD in his cap in three turns. Okay, through let's... events. Oh, jeez. Are you serious? I'm um, go to province. I mean, but it's right here in Lost Lands. It's got 30 PD. I think this is a dump. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is a dump. I See, look. Did it work? Yes. So it's a success, right? Darn you um, using my own words. <laughs> no, but like this. So, okay. If you're wondering, like, when do I PD dump? If you know for sure that they're going to attack your province, that is like the first criteria to PD dump. Now, the second criteria is like, is it going to kill what he's going to send at it? And I think in this case, yes, because Ashdod is tiny. He can't, he's not going to go send a big army when his cap is surrounded to take out like a little neighboring province. So for sure, Ashdod is thinking, oh, he just took it. He raided it. He just left one PD in there. I'll go kill it with like a few <laughs> Gileadites or yeah. whatever, right? Um, now, that it's the question though is, is the 400 gold or whatever it costs to do 30 PD, actually more than that, is like, did he kill that much in gold cost, you know, from uh, Ashdod? And he might not have gotten his money's worth quite yet. Um, but it does. But sometimes when you're winning a war like this, you can afford to. I, I was um, going to say that like why why would this be okay even if he doesn't even if he doesn't have them like even if the money doesn't come out even i still feel like it's worth it to to kill these troops uh, well maybe van doesn't need to kill the troops but it messes with ashdod's ability to mount an effective defense and to move around the map right so there are like strategic considerations beyond just the how many troops did you kill and Keep and in mind, reduces. we're approaching the we're uh, 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 approaching the point where Ashdod cries wolf. <laughs> I think he stays in until um, until the. I mean, uh, not to spoiler this too much, but he he does stay in it until the end. Yes, but this is about when he calls out that he is being destroyed by Van. Oh, you're correct. Yeah, he hasn't called it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, and by the way, we were wrong in the last episode. So Tiss hasn't even started moving towards in this direction. So a little bit of a spoiler last time. Oh, That's no, they, Grippa. They, now they don't have to watch any more episodes because they already know that Grippa's going in this direction. <laughs> okay, um, to keep moving forward. Uh, boring, boring. Wait, hold on. Why is he? Okay, so this is on the fort. Why do you keep a single so, uh, a single scout on the fort? Why didn't uh, he run the, this guy away? So it's the equi It's kind of the equivalent of uh, having one PD, um, but you can do it. By the way, this you can do this. By the way, not you can do it with a scout, but you could also do it with a single unit. Um, so let's say you attacked a fort with an army, and then you intend to retreat off of the army because you have something better better to do with your life. Um, you should always take one of your units from that army and detach it from the commander and put it in that box at the top. That way it just stays on top of the fort. And what that does is it makes it so that the person who's being sieged, if they don't break siege, the fort will remain under siege, even though there's just one unit, or in this case, one scout, um, laying siege to it. So the person who's under siege might be afraid of breaking siege because they might not be certain that they can defeat your army. But if they don't try, then you could just move away, be doing something productive with your army while still keeping the fort under siege with just the single scout. So it's a nice little advanced trick that you can do um, when, you're the, when you're on the attack. And if you're defending, if you're under siege, then you should always try to break siege with something cheap and disposable uh, if you can. What's fun is when you get two really good players together, the way that you break this and that you do it efficiently is to take your own scout. And then you bring your own scout in and you know that he's set to, I mean, as you can see, he's set to retreat. retreat. Yep. 
But then you have a then you have two good players, so the good player knows that the other player is going to do this, and so they keep their scout there because you know that you know what you're going to do is, and it's off chance he has an army, you're going to do hold, 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 and retreat. But then you get into this like you know 3D chess of is he going to stay, is he not? And I watched a battle the other day where two players had two scouts that just duped it out for claim for you know king of the hill who gets this fort. And rocks, paper, scissors of dominions. Yeah. <laughs> Rolling the dice until uh, they literally what happens is that he's only got so many short bow and they their precision is crap. And the way that it works in dominions, not going too much in depth, is that they, you know, it normally doesn't hit. And so they, they go through all 12 rounds of am- ammunition and then they take out their daggers and they literally have a dagger fight. Which is always epic. So, uh, moving on. Sorry. Uh, do, do, do. Oh my. Um, 70 marrows. Would you take this fight? I, was this bad luck or was this just, um, was this a bad Is fight? Is this underwater? Yes. Yes, this is underwater. He's fighting Ashdod and Ashdod PD dumped an underwater province. <laughs> marrows is a pretty shitty, um, PD type, but. Everything's pretty shitty underwater. Um, I don't know. He's got nets. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing is, I, I like I look at this and I'm like, you know what? Okay, so it's a PD dump, so it's not the best thing, but Yeah, it looks so, like Yeah, but he has eighty. So I honestly I'll say this. Um unless you've played a lot of underwater nations, um like the way the indie troops work underwater, like you just it's a you know, you get used to the indie strengths and weaknesses on land after you've played Dominions a while. But you have to relearn all that when you play underwater because it's just different types of troops, right? And it's quite possible that, like, you look at a situation and on land you feel like, yeah, I could take, like, 60 or whatever the report says, like a well-defended, you know, province with this. And then you go underwater and you're like, nope, I guess this unit just kind of kills this other unit. So it, if the player like doesn't have a close. lot of experience. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, like this looks close to, to retreating for a bunch of these stacks here. So, well, the benefit of doing a PD dump is that if you win, then as many as you've lost, it doesn't matter. Um, yes. But if you lose, you lost all that gold. So uh, he got lucky because, well, I think it was, I think it was down to scripting in this particular case because he had the marrows, the the counter marrows if you will off to the t- in a box to the side and so they wound up getting surrounded by the pd marrows and picked off and that caused the oh, needs to route yeah i think yeah. you're right i think that if he would have um maybe it would have been different if he would have because these guys one-on-one i mean i bet maybe what he's trying to do is flank with these guys and these guys just didn't kill fast enough well the exits are just not like, I don't know, like, look, it was 70 marrows of PD versus 25 marrows plus 25 ichthyids, right? I'm not yeah. sure that ichthyids are such elite troops, even with their nets, that they make up for, like, two marrows. In fact, they don't, right? Look look at the stats. He he has a net. Wait, let's look at the ichthyid for a second. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. So he's got a net. But other than that, he's got no protection. It's a 16 hit point dude with a stone spear, which has he's got bad more attack. than double the protection. Okay. <laughs> okay. The, the, the protection. The, everything is spear, so everything's armor piercing, anyways, right? Yeah. So and the marrow, it's got a spear that does more damage, right? And same attack. The protection is the same. The hit points are basically the same. So, except for the net. Plus, he has a shield. So yeah. Net versus shield, like they're basically just as good as each other. There are yeah. the thing is, there are other ichthyids. There are ichthyids that are stronger that have shields and armor, but not these ichthyids. So honestly, these ichthyids are one on. They're like one on one. I would take them with marrows, right? They're roughly the same strength. I mean, the net. They're also running up against the armored marrows. Yeah. So in this case, it's like fifty versus seventy. Like I, it'd be hard to script that. To a win, like you just don't have the numbers. I I think that the my... ichthyids are are very good. I think the battle was very close. Um, ichthyids because of the net. I 
I think that Ichthyids, because of the net, are able to negate some of the damage, but it's it's two glass cannons. You're gonna okay, but Ichthyids. Look, if you let's say you fire twenty five nets, right? There's twenty five Ichthyids, so you fire twenty five nets with nine precision, so like half of them miss, right? Yeah. So you fire twelve nets, so you neutralize twelve marrows, twelve PD marrows, right? Now it's fifty dudes versus sixty dudes. <laughs> Like you still don't have the numbers. <laughs> like it's just... I, I'm just I'm laughing because we've gone ten minutes on Ichthyids first marrows. So <laughs> well, it, it turned out to be very relevant, right? This is yeah. like a hundred. There's a lot of gold that he was. This, this is this is the stuff you need to know for Dominion. <laughs> that, well, yeah, exactly. That's Dominion's for you. Now, oh my goodness. Now he was a. Uh... If he had the shipbreakers that Ashdod threw away into a skeedy dump a couple turns ago, they would have destroyed the marrows because the shipbreakers are the best merc group, yes. period. Yes. Okay, guys. Well, I think that's the end of the turn. I think that's the end of the episode. And uh, before we go into the various counters to marrows, uh, I think we need to end. So I uh, thank you guys so much for joining. I really appreciate it. I had a good time. Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys again. Do you want to say goodbye? Bye-bye. See you later. See ya. Take care, everybody.